from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE, covering KubeCon and CloudNativeCon North America 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're live here at, at KubeCon Cloud Native. This is theCUBE's live coverage, or three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Day two, I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman. Our next guest is an end user, also a program chair of EnvoyCon, which was sold out. Matt Klein, with, uh, software engineer with Lyft. Great to have you on again, good to see you. Thanks for spending the time. Thank you, great to have great to I know be you've here. been busy, your voice is getting hoarse. You guys had a successful EnvoyCon sold out on the front end of KubeCon and CloudNativeCon. Um, interesting, right? This is a rising tide. What's going on? How, wh how'd that go? Why the, all the interest? It's been, uh, I continue to be blown away by, by the overall reaction. Uh, yeah, so we had EnvoyCon on Monday. We had, I think, almost 350 people come, sold out. I think we could have had a, a larger room uh, if it was available, but we didn't. And uh, just amazing to walk around this conference and see uh, you know, all the cloud vendors getting behind Envoy, lots of companies building on top of Envoy, all of the end users. It just seems to be everywhere here. And, and to have uh, only been open source for a little over two years, yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. We, we, Matt, 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 you know, I think a year ago, like service mesh was something we were still kind of, a, the basic understanding yeah. of what it was, and it definitely, uh, there's certain interviews we've done this week, and they, like, you know, service mesh, you know, Envoy, things like Istio, are going to be even bigger than, than Kubernetes. Yeah, so. well, you know, it's, I, I've, I've been to the last few KubeCons, and every KubeCon, I think that I can't, can't get much bigger or more nuts, and the, no, no, everyone seems to be a little bit crazier. Uh, but no, just from the community perspective, EnvoyCon was fantastic because we had mostly end user talks, so it was really fun to get people together and to see all the different things that they're building on top of Envoy. One of the things that's, I think, impressive and I think is a real notable uh, story, and of course we talked about it a bit last time you were on, is that Lyft, as an end user, it kind of encapsulates and epitomizes kind of the innovation building going on. A lot of people have been building a lot of cool stuff using cloud look and getting down and dirty, rolling their own and actually creating business value, mm -hmm. um, not in a classic IT by IT, just build IT, build systems yep. to build business value. And then donating it in to scale up with the community is pretty notable. So congratulations on that. Thanks. Now you have startups kind of acting the same way. So, the line between vendor and end user is certainly changing. I mean, this is, we need more end users on. Well, they're all kind of yeah. end users. So this is a dynamic that is, I think, notable for this generation. And, and, it's, and, and, and it's, it's real. Talk yep. about that dynamic, because uh, I think this is a real success story, but also sure. a trend in the industry. Yeah, you know, so I, I, I think for us, um, What's fun for me about not only building Envoy but seeing how it's evolved is really what, what you said, is that uh, I like solving like actual problems for people, right? And you know, I, uh, we can have different opinions on uh, you know, what the different vendors are doing. Of course, there's lots of people doing different things. But for me, at least working at a company like Lyft, it's super fun to be able to build technology that solves specific problems that the business is actually happening. Now, if something becomes successful, sure, we're going to see a lot of vendors come in and hopefully build products that can help help other folks. Um, the, the way that I look at it, and this has been an interesting evolution for me over the last year, is I would say a year ago, you know, uh, people would come to me and say, hey Matt, you know, I've heard about Envoy, like I would like to use it to help solve some problems, and I went to the website and I'm like, I don't understand it, right? Like it's too complicated to use, the, the documentation is not good yeah. enough. And I think over the last year, my thinking has evolved a little bit in the sense that we've seen so many people or end users or companies build fantastic products on top of Envoy, and I think one of the reasons that Envoy has become so successful is that it's a, it's a building block that other people can come and add vertical value. So whether that's um, you know, a more sophisticated internet company like Lyft, 
or a vendor or a cloud vendor. I think that's what has made the community so successful is that we can build this base thing and it's yeah. amazing, but then we can allow people to add vertical value. And, and you know, that's an interesting dynamic of both cloud and open source. You look at Amazon, one of the, the most successful public cloud, their core building blocks was EC2 and S3 originally. Yep. Open source is about building on top of yep. other things. So yeah. again, the dynamic between open source and cloud scale is really kind of the magic. Well, and, and just in terms of you know, how, how we actually go through and I think fund some of these projects ends up being very interesting, right? So just in, in the sense that uh, you know, we have a lot of full-time people working on Envoy and they're working on it actually for different reasons. We have people that are working on it as end users. We have people working on it because they're building vertical products, but in the end, everyone wins, right? Because the base technology stays technology focused uh, and, and I think that has what has been successful is that we allow people to succeed in, in different ways. All right, so Matt, you're at the, the forefront of one of the you know, most difficult problems that we're looking at these mm -hmm. days. It's scale, yeah. distributed systems, yep. and edge and yep. how that ties in. Yeah. You know, want to just get your kind of macro level viewpoint as to how we're doing as the industry, what are some of those tough challenges we, we, we sure. talk, we talk about things like IoT and edge and you know, vehicles yeah. of course have a lot of them. So. Yeah, so uh, I mean, I, I think when you say scale, there's two things that comes, comes to mind. There's uh, physical scale, and I do agree actually that uh, you know, we, we are continuing to push more compute out to the edge. And in fact, uh, I, I talked about this a little at EnvoyCon, but uh, I have, I think, some very exciting projects to bring, or plans to bring Envoy actually to mobile phones and to edge devices starting next year. So I'll have more to say about that in the, in the spring. I'm very excited about that. So I, I do think that there's a lot of opportunity to uh, better evolve uh, how we uh, you know, ingress data from the edge, how we do compute out at the edge, a bunch of other things, and I think Envoy will be at the forefront of that. But when you talk about scale, I still think that you know, there's a lot of human scale involved of how we scale the number of developers that are working on all of these architectures. Uh, and I do think that you know, service mesh and Kubernetes and a bunch of other stuff, ultimately, if we're successful, it helps us grow the number of product developers that can successfully work on these systems. I still think we have a long way to go, um, but you know, I think that's one of those areas where, where uh, I, I think some of these technologies help people both at yeah. physical internet scale, but yeah. also at human scale. Well, I really appreciate your work that you're doing, your contributions to the community, both on solving the problems with Envoy and also being the program chair of EnvoyCon, I think is going to be great, great for the community. I got to ask you, as you get pulled into a lot of these, I won't say political or you know, media kind of conversations, you got to kind of be a helicopter and get above and get high level and talk to people who are discovering yep. and learning for the sure. first time, which is part of uh, what communities do. Yep. How do you talk about those other end users that saying, hey Matt, I'm going to reshape, uh, our company's going to reshape their IT investments all based on open source, um, and I really want to learn more about Envoy and just the benefits of cloud native in general. Yep. I got to go, and I believe her, I got to go talk to some wanna believers or non-believers yes. in my company, yes. and I got to make my point home. How do they be successful? What's your advice to that? Because uh, that's a challenge a lot of yes, people are having. I, I totally agree. My advice first and foremost is to start by understanding what problems are trying to be solved. And, I, and I, I actually think that sounds very obvious, but I think that people don't do it enough because I think sometimes we come to conferences like this and we see all the amazing technology that, that people are building and it seems fantastic, but if one uh, tries to adopt everything that they see here without understanding the incremental steps and, and you know, the things that are, that are, are the problems that are being solved, yeah. uh, that can be very problematic. It's a new kind of technical debt. Right. It's kind so, of a new way to. So my, my advice is to start with what, what are the actual problems, right? And whether that be observability issues or uh, authentication issues or security issues or whatever, is to start with the problems and then work backwards and my advice is always incremental, no, no big bang, right? And try to figure out the right incremental path of adopting yeah. the smallest piece of technology that solves a particular problem and go from there. Yeah, and, and build economies of scale 
to the right. mission. Right, and, 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 and you know, whether yeah. that means working with a, a vendor or working with the raw open source technology, that's a, that's a personal decision of each company to figure out what their comfort level is. But that, that really is my advice, is start with the problem statement and then figure out the easiest and the quickest incremental path forward. The trends that we're seeing, Stu was talking earlier, a lot of hyperscalers in here, a lot of diversity coming into the community. Just, what's the, what's the hallway conversation amongst the um, you know, people in the community around as the community grows larger? I mean, open source community core persona, yep. core constituency. Then you got the downstream impact to that is IT is changing, developers yes. are coming in. So it's not so much changing personas and target audiences of the environment, yep. Open source is still core. Sure. That's kind of the downstream impacts. And so you're seeing a lot of people come in, IT people, new developers. Yes. How does the community look at that? What's your view on how to engage, but also not alienate uh, well, new people? Well, I, I, I mean, I think ultimately, uh, like we are attempting to build systems that help people be successful and be more productive, right? And I think the natural evolution of that is uh, bringing some of this technology into the enterprise. We have to recognize that as the community scales, uh, the baseline level of knowledge is, is different. I mean, we all come at it with, with different uh, understanding of whether it be networking or orchestration or, or yeah, security. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think what I would say is that we're never going to build one technology that makes everyone happy. It is, it is impossible. Yeah. It's impossible to build a technology that satisfies both uh, the expert user and the entry level user. So I believe that we need to build layered technologies, layered abstraction, that allow people to plug in at different, at different levels, yeah. and some of them are more opinionated than others. Yeah. And I think it, it is, recognizing and supporting a community that has base level technology, has vendors uh, adding value at different layers to help people, yeah. uh, and, and really just respecting the fact that people come at it with different levels. I mean, application assembly is really the, what's yeah, the, where it's ex going. Exactly, <laughs> I agree. Uh, yeah. So Matt, Matt, I wonder if you could reflect back for us. You're, you're the creator of Von Boy. Yeah. Uh, I saw you up on stage yesterday, you know, just the, the, the supportive team and the community that yeah. helped us grow, and, and you've reached graduation. Yep. Uh, you know, what does that mean to you, sure. to the team? Uh, because you know, it, it's different than a school graduation. You yes. know, this is not the end of something. You don't get a right. diploma at it. So is there yeah. a party? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if there was. I don't think they invited get pictures. me. Pictures. <laughs> Foundation picking up the bar. No, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, so, uh, like. From a project perspective, in terms of how we go about our day to day, uh, I, I, like I don't think that much changes. I, I think we have been operating as a mature, graduated level project probably for quite some time in terms of adoption and methodology and stuff like that. I think what graduation uh, means for the project is it's a it's a vote of respect from the larger industry and the community that Envoy isn't going to disappear. It's not going to become an abandoned project on GitHub if, for example, Lyft stops investing in it. I think we've reached a critical mass of project success. And I think what that means is that it, it allows uh, folks that may be at more conservative organizations, like uh, who may be a little later to adopt newer technologies, to give them the confidence that says that Envoy's not going to disappear, that we can uh, potentially bet some of our, uh, you know, um, some of our future on, on, on Envoy. So I think it's a vote of confidence. Uh, I don't think it changes a lot about how we operate on a day-to-day -day basis. Matt, thanks for coming on theCUBE. And again, congratulations. Seminal work, you guys are doing great, and Lyft is really, I think, a great example of the new dynamic in open source where they're building and they're working with the community to continue to extend that, and this is what we want. That's what open source is all about. It is. So congratulations. And we have a graduation party for Envoy. We'll figure it out, with photos and pictures and everything else. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Cool, thank Appreciate you very much. It. Okay, CUBE coverage here live. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman. More coverage after this short break. Stay with us. <laughs>